what I meant when I said we pay my brother to walk and talk, because it's uh, you, it's nothing for you to walk in the kitchen and I'm rolling silverware, you know, but he'll be, we, we wait for him to come when we have a large group, he'll come in to greet the group and he kind of loosens them up, he tells them a few jokes, you know, and then he goes over the entrees that they'll get to select from that night and explains the dishes, so he's kind of the walk and talk and menu. And then he throws in his jokes, which a lot of people say, in fact, Robin Roberts has even said it on national TV, and you've got to listen to Bobby's corny jokes. So, uh, same, but they, they, he always gets a big laugh, and people write us letters after an event's been here saying this was the highlight of their convention or the highlight of their trip with Bobby and his jokes, and he just makes everybody feel so, so at home, and they, and they just all really enjoy it. All right, so everybody ready? How y'all all doing? Bob Mahoney here. Nice to have y'all there. What I do around here is I walk and I talk. Keep them working. So as soon as you shut up, somebody will put you in the kitchen. I'm here to tell you it gets hot in the kitchen. But anyway, how about you, sir? Did I ever tell you about my crows? Yes, sir. Five crows sitting on a fence. You shot and killed one, huh? You got left. Four. You think them crows gonna hang around the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time common sense prevails over adding this subtraction. How about you, sir? My dog, he don't have any legs. You know what we call him? It don't matter. <laughs> he ain't coming anyway, right? And about the little old maid said when she died, she refused to have any male pallbearers. This friend said, why, why is that? She said, ain't none of them took me out when I was living. I'll be damned. <laughs> Take me out when I die. And uh, bear the bull coming right at you. You got one bullet. Which one would you shoot? The bear or the bull? You shoot the bear. You know what? You can always shoot the bull. <laughs> And did y'all know that women say 30,000 words a day while men only say 15,000 words a day? Women talk twice as much in a day's time what a man does. That's what the wife told her husband. He, he said, why is that, hon? She said, because we have to repeat everything. <laughs> yes, ma'am, you know what he said? <laughs> what you said? <laughs> and then what happened in church Sunday? It was God awful. The devil walked in and told everybody to get out. Everybody got out this one lady. She didn't move. The devil went up to her and said, don't you know who I am? She said, yeah, I know who you are. The devil said, aren't you afraid of me? She said, no, I'm not. He said, why not? She said, I live with your brother for two <laughs> She wasn't afraid of anybody. And about the 75-year-old widow had shocking news tell her three girlfriends. And the shocking news was she'd get married. One of her friends wanted to know if he was good looking. She said, no. Another friend wanted to know if he had a lot of money. She said, no. Well, the third girlfriend said, if he doesn't have any money, he's not good looking. Why in the world are you marrying him? She said he can drive at night. <laughs> that drive at night gets to be big, right? And, it, and uh, did y'all hear about Bill Clinton and the Pope? Oh, they had a big meeting. After the meeting, they had a press conference. At the press conference, his president, not everything go with his meeting with the Pope. He said it went really well. We agreed on 80% of the things we talked about. He goes, the way the Pope comes out there, the Pope, how everything go? He said, not too well. He said, well, isn't it true? Y'all agreed on 80% of the things y'all were talking about? Pope said, yeah, that's true. He said, but we were talking about the Ten Commandments. <laughs> a couple of them he didn't have quite a head to, right? And then they had that little boy pulling that red wagon right in front of church. Wheel came off. Little boy said, damn. Preacher's right there. Said, son, you should not say damn. You should say good Lord. He said, yes, sir. Preacher put the wheel back on the wagon. Little boy went about ten feet and the wheel comes off. Little boy hollers, good Lord. That wheel jumped up off that ground and went right back on that wagon. And that preacher said, damn! <laughs> and then they, and then they, then they had the 20-year-old tw uh, son-in-law. His father-in-law invited him over to have a nice, lovely dinner. While they was having that nice, lovely dinner, his father-in-law told him how much he appreciated him marrying his only daughter. And to show his appreciation, he was going to give him 50% of his lumber yard. He was just going to slide it right in his lap. He said, I really appreciate that. Thank you. He said... He said, but what I need you to do, I need you to go down and work at the yard for about three months. In case something happens to me, you step right in. We don't disobey. I don't do lumber yard work. He said, what's the problem? He said, I can't handle that sawdust and that machinery. It just ain't me. He said, that's fine. We put you in the office. I don't do office work either. He said, what's the problem with the office? He said, I'm claustrophobic. Them walls start closing in on me. I can't handle that. He says, well, son, what are we going to do with you? He said, I guess you can go ahead and buy me out. <laughs> Then about the 20-year-old daughter brought her fiancé over to meet Mommy and Daddy for the first time. So the young man's walking around the house, and the daddy taps him on the shoulder and says, Son, here you're getting ready to marry my daughter, and I don't know anything about you. He says, Why don't we go to study and have a little chat? 
So they're going to study, and the father says, son, what are your plans in life? He said, I'm a theology scholar. Daddy said, that is really nice, but how will you afford a nice home for my daughter? He said, I'll study hard, and God will provide. He said, son, how will you afford to raise children? He said, God will provide. He goes in the living room. His wife said, hon, how'd everything go? He says, well, honey, he has no money. He has no employment plans, and furthermore, he thinks I'm God. <laughs> So that might that might not that might not be no joke, right? And then they had the two baseball players play ball every day. They didn't miss a day. They didn't play ball. One day they're coming out of church and they bumped into one another. Said, you know, I hate to go to heaven and not playing ball. The other guy said, I ain't going if they ain't playing. He said, well, let's make a deal. Whoever gets to heaven first, find out what's going on. Let the other guy on the ground know. Well, sure enough, Joe died, went to heaven, right? He called down there to old Bob. Hey, Bob, hey, Joe, they playing ball up there? He said, I got good news and bad news up here in heaven. He said, give me the good news first. He says, they playing ball in heaven. He said, amen, brother, what's the bad news? He said, you pitching tomorrow. <laughs> so tomorrow, of that story, you better be ready. I will be chunking tomorrow, right? And then they had the little boy standing back at church, and the preacher come up. The little boy said, Reverend, how'd you cut yourself? The Reverend said, I was thinking about the sermon, and I cut myself shaving. That little boy told the preacher, he said, well, next time you ought to cut the sermon and think about it. <laughs>